see Curtain Vlogs Part 2 from Pop-Up Theatre. Um, just thank you very much for logging on to the first one and for all the great feedback. Great to see so many people are interested in, in how little old groups like us put on the show. So we are now in the pre-production stage and today I'm going to take you through a little bit of what's happening so that you can see about all of the different elements that have to come together before you can officially put on a show. Let's go. Do you want to put on a show? Guess what? A lot of things have to happen before that can happen. People often say to us, you should do Wicked or you should do Mamma Mia or Phantom would be a great show. And they're great shows. But in order to be able to do a show, you have to first acquire the performing rights for that show. So what does that mean? Somebody somewhere owns the rights to that musical. And what they do is they will lease them to you so that you can go off and actually put on the performances and they will get a royalty fee and that's how they make money from doing shows. You contact them, you tell them what show you want to do, what dates you want to do, and they let you know if they're available. So why would a show not be available to do? Basically, there are two types of shows. There's amateur and professional. And if there's a professional production in the vicinity or in uh, your country or in your county or anywhere in the area, they prefer to hand out those rights first because it's somebody's bread and butter. Obviously, the professional production is what they want people to see first. And only then, if that's not um, a problem, will you get the rights to do it as an amateur group. If it's a case that there are no professional productions in your area, and there's usually a distance requirement, so it could be something like you can't have an amateur production within 200 kilometers of a professional production or something like that. If your dates add up and you're good to go, then you're allowed to buy the rights to that show. Normally what they ask you to do is put down a deposit. So it's usually around the general area of five, 600 uh, pound um, and you pick up your rights and then you can do a show. So your first call is to make sure that the rights are available. Then you've got to make sure that your theater is available. And when those two things match, then you've got a show. You can do the show and you can do the show when you want to do it. In order to be able to do a show, you've got to have a really good production team. So you have to make sure that you have a director, a musical director, a choreographer, and a chorus mistress or a chorus master. Sometimes your musical director can do both. So now you've got your production team, now you've got to get your technical team organized. Your technical team is your lighting designer and your sound engineer. These guys are super important and the first thing you need to make sure with these guys is that they're available for the dates that you're running the show. With the production team, they need to be available for the entire rehearsal phase. The technical team need to be available for the actual running of the show itself, as they're working in the theater for every single night and day that that show is on. So once you've got your performing rights, you've got your theater, you've got your production team, and then you've got your technical team, you have got a show. Then you can finally advertise and get excited and tell people this is actually happening. Uh, and that's the best feeling once it's out there. People can get excited and they can plan and they can hope to audition and things like that. So once you've got your team organized, it's booked into their calendars. Everyone knows the plan. They know when you're gonna be rehearsing. They know kind of what days they're gonna be needed for, how many days a week, how many hours a week, that kind of thing. Then you can start planning the rehearsals. You've gotta get your rehearsal venue organized, your auditions well organized, just making sure that there's no clashes with events that are happening locally, making sure that um, everyone can attend if they want. Every show you see on stage would take about 12 weeks rehearsal time. So just in the case of the producers, we know that we are going ahead in early May. So we plan to audition before Christmas because if we can audition before Christmas and we can cast before Christmas, we'll be able to hand the material over to that cast the scripts, the scores, the music, and they'll have plenty of time within that kind of a three week break over Christmas to get familiar with the material, um, to do their research, to get into the lines, um, to get their ear listening to the music well before they start back into uh, rehearsals in early January. The next biggest thing in terms of the production then is your set and your costume. The Producers is not a small show. <laughs> it is not a small show at all. <laughs> the Producers is a massive show, huge in terms of set, it's huge in terms of costumes, and they're the kind of thing you need to book in really early. So in Ireland there's about, oh god, I think it's way, oh, minimum 100, 
we'll say 20 musical societies in Ireland alone. But that's not including England and Scotland and all those other places. So you've got to book those things in really early. Depending on your show, you can build your own set. It could be very minimal. With the producers, producers is big. Producers is really big. So we've had to source our set early. Our set is coming from London and our costumes are coming from Scotland. We booked the rights for the producers before Christmas 2019 and it was around about then that we had to contact the set company in London and the costume company to say these are the dates that we're doing it because with transport and everything that's a big ask. You're going to have to leave a couple of days either side. Um, so we had to book that in uh, a year and a half in advance because when you think about it there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of other musical societies doing different shows um, and someone could be looking to do the producers at that time or whatever show you're doing at that time so you got to get in there early get these things booked so we have all that done which is great so now that you have everything booked and you're ahead of yourself and you think it's great you now have to figure out how to pay for all these things <laughs> the fundraising side of doing a show that is a job all on its own. So you go to the theatre and you see a production, curtains go back, show runs for two and a half hours and you hopefully, if we're doing our job right, have a great night, curtain goes down and people go home and they don't see the work that goes in before that has to get to that point. It takes 12 months to get a show from idea to planning to rehearsal and then onto a stage. And what people also don't realize is that to do a show, it's, it's bare minimum, minimum to stage a show, 30,000 euro. That baseline, 30,000 euro. And most societies anywhere start off that year with zero in the bank, nothing. The amateur arena, doesn't really qualify for any particular grants as such. Depends on what you're doing, but for the most part, um, we have to fundraise all of our own money. And that can be difficult too, because you're up against very worthy charities and the market is very saturated. So you've got to get creative. And that's why you see a lot of companies doing rock and roll bingos and um, stars in the rise and lip sync battles and it's hard even doing those things the work that has to go into organizing stuff like that is just massive and that's why you know a show ticket might cost 20 euro and even if you sell out every single seat by the time your bills come out of it you don't even break even you have to sell programs and sell raffle tickets and let me tell you, if you ever go to a show and you buy a raffle ticket and you're, you, know, you think, oh, I'll just buy a raffle ticket for the crack, I might win something, and oh, I might just pick up a program. Honestly, that makes such a huge difference to a society. You have no idea. That can bring in a couple of thousand euro and it can help pay for a, a production team a bill or it can help pay for costumes or it can help pay for the set. So when you go to a show and you, you're buying tickets and you're, you're doing stuff like that, don't underestimate how important that is to that society. I'm telling you, from it's us especially, and I'm sure every group is the same, thank you for all the raffle tickets, all the programs, and all the little things like that. Every little helps, trust me. Bill's gotta get paid, and um, ticket sales don't quite cover it, so all of the things that people do, all of the fundraising, just thank you for supporting all the little things, because they do add up. Bus and pop-up, we actually, we very much graft outside of the production stuff to fundraise. So we, we teach a lot. We work with kids, we work with adults, workshops, I mean everything. Um, we work all year round to, uh, to just to try and fill up this pot that we then go and reuse to putting on shows and doing great workshops and being able to do high quality um, work with the kids and with the adults, but also to be able to put on really high end theater for people that when they come and they shell out their 20 euro, 
to see a show, they're getting a good show. It's extremely important to me that people aren't shelling out that kind of money and it's not worth it. That's hard earned money and in pop-up we're always like, if people shell out that kind of money, they better get to see a really good show. This is the way it is. And we don't get paid. Even um, on the production team side of it, I have never and will never ever take a penny for doing anything to do with the shows. To me, it's a, a project of passion, it's a hobby. And I couldn't justify it, to be honest, because I'm also the producer and I'm also in charge of the budget. And when you see where all that money is spent and where you see how hard it is to bring in money, I mean, this is the thing that people don't realize as well about theater is that the people who put on the shows, the people who are involved in the production side and the people who are involved in uh, the committee stuff, they're volunteers, they work full time for the most part and this is a hobby for them. It's a hobby for us, like we do it. I work Monday to Friday, nine to five kind of a job type of thing um, and most people who do shows do that those kind of hours because rehearsals are in the evenings, they lend themselves better. But. Um, rehearsals and putting on shows are very much people running out the door of their job at four or five o'clock, horsing a bit of a dinner into them and then run into a committee meeting or run into a production meeting or run into a rehearsal. And that goes on for months and months and months. So we fundraise by teaching. We teach, teach, teach. I leave work at five o'clock in the evening, I'm hopping in the car or I'm going to Roscommon or I'm going to a class in town. We work at weekends, we work just around the clock. All of the holidays that I've taken in the last three years have been to do camps and midterm camps, but it's just to be able to bring in money and that money is so easily spent then. You're like, it's just in one hand and out the other. I think people, that's something, it's important for people to know that because these things wouldn't happen otherwise. They wouldn't happen otherwise, you know? So it's important that people know the dedication that has to go into that you know that those people put in the hours those guys put in for months and months and months on end the hard work it's just it's it's like having another full-time job on top of a full-time job oh you love it so you don't mind but it is a lot of work it's a lot of hours so when you're planning a budget you can be like okay like we'll say for instance the producers the producers is not a cheap show to do <laughs> so we're we kind of sat back this year and we were like right okay this is like december january december and um, okay if we're gonna do the producers then we need to have x amount of money going in and we have to plan for this and we have to plan for that and then rona came along and ruined all those plans <laughs> so now we've got to condense like 12 months worth of fundraising into the last six months of this year for fundraising <laughs> So I'm just trying to enjoy this time because when this time is over, we <laughs> we are gonna be working around the clock seven days a week. So pretty much from the minute the lockdown is lifted and we can start working again and we can start doing our classes until the day the curtain goes down on the producers in May 2021, there will be no break, there will be no holiday, there will be no weekends off, there will be nothing. It's just gonna be hit the ground running and I can sleep in May 2021. <laughs> Oh my god like even saying that out loud is just mental but it's the truth so that's where we're at we have a lot of work done we have a lot of work to do and yeah it's just about enjoying this little bit of downtime before the chaos kicks off and i can't wait to bring you with us every step of the way so um hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be getting back into uh, getting our classes up and running again and it'll be great to just get on the road. So, pre-production 2021. It's mad to think in just over six months we will actually have a cast for this show. It's just so weird to think of having a show. That's the bit I love actually is, I'm such a great believer in the open audition. Like, oh my God, you never know who's gonna walk through your door. And it's anyone's game. And the producers, is one of the funniest shows you will ever see. I could cast it 10 times over from the talent in this town. I really could. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Bye.